So this is why I can eat this all year round without getting tired of dieting. Of course it's so good. It's full of fat and it's high calorie dense food. The trick is to make it taste so good with less calories. That's where I come in. Coach Greg, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing Jordan Niao Fitness. Jordan is a very popular YouTuber. He knows all about dieting and training, and he has posted his real diet, what he eats. It's called My Full Day Eating with Diet Tips. I haven't watched this. I am going to be reviewing this from scratch, start to finish. I'm going to tell you, does he make sense? Is he spewing nonsense? What is his diet like? Will it work for you? Do I recommend him or not? So for information, I'm not doing any special diet like intermittent fasting, ketogenic diet, paleo diet. Okay, so he starts off. He doesn't follow any special diet. He's not keto, paleo, paleo, whatever. He just eats calorie maintenance. So far, this makes sense. Calories in, calories out, surplus, you gain weight, deficit, you lose weight. So far, he's saying exactly the truth and it makes sense. My calorie maintenance is about 2007. So I have to eat below 2007 and certain macros percentage which I'm about to share with you in a short while that helps me to lose weight or to maintain my size. So he's going for a 2,500 calorie diet which is a 200 calorie deficit times 7, 1,400 calories. So he's going to lose a bit less than half a pound in a week. That's great. Slow and steady weight loss because then you can gain a lot of muscle while cutting. Yes, you can build muscle in a deficit proven beyond question. Some morons still exist and think you can, but they're of course morons. Now, different than me, he believes in the macro percents. So he's more of a, oh, it should be this percent of fat, this percent of carbs. I'm more of a, no, I just need to be in a deficit. Eat enough protein, more fat, less fat, more carbs, less fat, doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter what you think. But for him, he has his percents. I'm not gonna fault him for that, it's okay. You're allowed to eat a certain amount of macros if you want. I'm just saying you don't have to. So the first meal of the day is not really a solid meal. It's more like a liquid meal. Does that matter? It doesn't freaking matter. It doesn't matter. Some days I could have a liquid meal, some days I could have a solid meal. It's a meal. It doesn't matter if it's in freaking liquid, solid, or gas form. Well, like, really, I guess you can't have gas form meal, but it doesn't matter what the state of the matter you're eating is. Liquid, solid, French toast, protein, ice cream, it doesn't friggin' matter. He waits two hours before he eats breakfast. Do I recommend that? No. Is it okay to do that? Yes. And normally I start my first meal of the day like a few hours after I'm awake. But if he ate a bit sooner, he would have the first opportunity for muscle protein synthesis to occur. He wakes up, has a coffee. Get some energized, does work at the computer. Sounds like me. I sit at the computer, wake up, but I'm eating my friend's toast. So, do you need to wait two hours? No, there's nothing magical about fasting two hours in the morning. If you want, if you're not really hungry right away, it's okay. And then only I will have my first liquid meal. Okay, so meal one is liquid meal is this. Protein powder with oatmeal. I call that a solid meal, but there is liquid in it because you add water to the oatmeal. It doesn't friggin' matter. We're arguing it's semantics here. I don't want to be pedantic at this point, but please. It's a lot of peas. Part of the point-by-point -point process of baking, baby bobkas. Balky, buddy butt, you really got a bop with a baby bobka, diddy buddy. We can't bump that baby babka ditty. It's part and parcel of the point by point process of baking baby babkas. Those of you who are old like me may or may not remember ba Balky Bartokamos from Perfect Strangers. Remember the baby babka ditty, buddy? I love that episode. To get started in dieting, the best way to keep track is actually on a meaning weighing scale. Kaboom! Best advice! Awesome! He's giving you really good advice here. The scale. You can measure by cups and stuff, but if you want bang on balls accuracy. Dead on balls accurate. It's an industry term. So use the scale, it's more accurate, track your calories. Not everyone knows what this looks like. You eat a chicken breast, you eat a piece of steak. Oh yeah, it's just one serving. Meanwhile, it's 100 grams extra and it has 200 more calories than you thought. That can easily happen. Till you're good, till you get the laser eyes like me. You can't just guess at what you're eating. Oh, I only eat 2,000 calories a day, I'm not losing weight. Meanwhile, you eat 2,600. That's most people. Most people can't track the calories in mayo, ketchup, and everything they're putting in. They don't estimate accurately. Baby skitten. 
I got a little baby two pound kitty at my feet. See my little skitten? It's a foster baby. This foster skitten is gonna be adopted soon. Hi everybody. Hi. Look in the camera. Yeah, I run around here. Yeah, I'm a little cute little baby cat. And it's not necessary, it must be 70 grams streak. It can be 72 grams, it can be 75 grams, as long as nothing too much. Yeah. Who cares? 10 calories is not gonna matter. But you can't start guessing and being off by 100, 200 calories. You gotta be somewhat accurate here. So this is my meal number one. You can choose to put into your fridge and eat later, or you can eat them immediately. Is that okay? Absolutely. I put it that in my plans often. Some people are, I don't eat breakfast, I'll give the meal one. I'll say, if you can't finish it, eat it later. It's okay. If you're eating four meals a day and meal one becomes two meals and you end up eating five meals a day, that's okay. You're not six years old. Your mom's not gonna say, finish dinner or you don't get dessert. You're an adult. You get to finish it or you get to store it for later. There's something called saran wrap. It's made to keep it in and fresh and you put it in the fridge for later. You're allowed to do that. You don't have to force feed. If you're not hungry, stop and save it for later. You can finish later. Well, if she lets you. You notice why I use teaspoon? Because teaspoon, in my opinion, it makes me fuller because I have to eat more. I have to eat more times. When I use bigger spoon, I have a fewer serving, right? It's just a psychology thing. So this is one of the strategies you can implement right away. It gives your body a chance to recognize that you're actually being satisfied. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That's good. Oh. I think. I don't know if that applies. So normally after my first meal, I'll do my workout. And because it is so light, protein and oats, I can do my workout immediately, but I'll give like, you know, just like half an hour for digestion. And I agree. I think it's great that he can eat and then go train 30 minutes after. Some of those foods, some of those macros are entered into the system, the protein, the carbs, gonna give him energy to fuel that workout. Mind you, what you ate the night before is gonna be into the muscle glycogen at that point. That's really what's fueling your workout. However, it would be more intelligent, more practical for him to eat a bit earlier. Think of it, he's waking up having coffee, two hours later he's eating breakfast, then 30 minutes after he's working out. Why not get up and have coffee, then 45 minutes later, then have his breakfast, then an hour and a half after that, then have his workout. That would allow even more time for meal one to digest to get more hydration. Research shows that if you train in the morning, it's not as good as later in the day, unless you're a morning workout person, then it can be equally as good. It's never better. Training in the morning is the hardest time to train hard and effective. You're not as hydrated, your glycogen stores are not as topped off as later in the day. Research shows this. Trust me, you don't need the research. I just said it. It's fact. Trust me, and he's doing a home floor workout that I freaking can't do. That looked intense. It wasn't a clothing workout, that's for freaking sure. So if you can do this stuff, look at his build, he's freaking in shape. No wonder he does this stuff, it's working. And what did my laser eyes say? He's about 15% body fat with a good amount of quality muscle, so it looks fantastic. Kind of build that most men would dream to have. I would say 99% of the world would love to have this physique. 1% or so are like, nah, man, I need more than that. But the most of you, if you could trade spots with him, you'd be trading spots with him. Look at him, he looks fantastic. So right after my training, I'll normally have a bigger meal, which is high in carbs and protein. What's meal two? Pasta and beef and some sauce. Who doesn't like a pasta dinner? Now, however, if you're not in shape, he's already in shape, he's already at his ideal fat percent, 15%. If you're not there, this meal I would not suggest you eat. Why? It's great meal, I'm not saying you can't eat it, it's just that it's not filling. If you're not full, you're gonna tend to wanna eat more. If you're not satisfied, you will eat more calories to get there. If you're not satisfied, you eat too many calories, you're in a surplus and you don't lose weight. If you're not very hungry, perfect meal. If you're a freaking athlete and you're doing a lot of exercise and you're trying to bulk or whatever, perfect meal. If you're trying to cut, there's better options, much better options. Now this looks massive, can be really full, but I find that full, right, makes me more satisfied. He hasn't seen what a massive meal looks like. I could eat six of those meals. Easy. If I eat like this, I would be 20% body fat, 
for sure. Ghrelin would be punching me in the face like a Mike Tyson workout. It wouldn't be good. It's not filling. He has great genetics, obviously. He can eat this way, not gain weight and not be hungry. I'm not that lucky. I'm not born with genetics to be shredded. I do HRT, that's why I'm shredded. Everyone knows that, right? Didn't matter that I rode my bike 70 freaking kilometers yesterday. No, it's not because of that. It has to be HRT. It doesn't matter that I weight lift all the time. Nope, it's HRT. He's probably natty. I'm on HRT. So who knows? It must be HRT. That's why I'm lean. Nothing to do with the fact that I diet and follow my cookbook and the recipes. So for example, in my cookbook, I give you a lot of low carb past options. Not one, but lots, several. And we go for the lowest fat portion meats and stuff so that there's less calories in the meal. So you can eat more of it. So compared to how much he's eating, mine you could eat maybe 50% more food volume. So if you look at the portion size and you look at my portion size, mine is bigger by about 50%. 50% more food, 50% more fun, 50% more freaking fantastical. And you can even split this meal, you cook now, and you can split it to meal two and meal three. It's like two meals cooked in one, so you don't have to cook so many times. That ain't no split into meals two and three. That's me eating meals two and three into one meal. I cannot diet on that. I could bulk on that. It's perfect for bulking, not for cutting. I'm sorry, so he is wrong. I'm not, I'm not biased. I'm watching the video and telling you, if you're a fan of his, I'm not hating on him. He looks fantastic. I'm just telling you, if you're trying to cut, it's not the good choice choice for cutting. Works for him. So here is a chicken leg, boneless chicken leg. Yeah, you gotta get rid of the skin. He does that so he's saving calories, but he's eating the chicken thigh, chicken leg. There's so many extra calories because there's so much more fat in that, and it's not good fat. Animal fat is not your best source of quality fat. It's not. It should have been salmon, maybe avocado, whatever. But there's better sources of fat than animal fat that's high in saturated fat. There are better sources of fat. This is not the best way to diet. Chicken breast would have had way less calories. So much easier to be in a deficit. He could have then added avocado to that, guacamole, whatever. He could have made it more interesting. Is there anything wrong with eating a chicken thigh? It's not inherently wrong. It's just there's better options if you're cutting. If you need the extra calories and you're bulking, sure. But what I see here is mostly a bulking diet done in a deficit, which is gonna make you very, very hungry. So I don't recommend this diet for those of you who are struggling to lose weight. But I wanna show you what I normally do, and that is using flour to turn this chicken to like a fried chicken. Do I need to explain fried chicken thigh dipped in flour? You may as well have freaking French toast. He needs to watch my videos. He needs to add French toast to his diet. Imagine how happy he'd be at that point. So he has a little tiny baby salad, little tiny baby salad. He does say it's very healthy. He explains it has a higher thermic effect of food. That's right, it takes more energy. There's a lot more energy requirements to cut up that food, to digest it, than there would be in something like sugar. My extra advice, eat five of those salads. That's a baby salad. It's good, but it ain't enough. All day I've seen him eat, and that's the only amount of vegetables he eat. I eat 20 times more veggies than he does in a day. 20 to zero, not 10 times as much, 20 times as much. Eric the Electric, go look at his salad bowl. That's half of what I would eat in a salad bowl. Eric the Electric salad bowl is way bigger than this. Y'all think Eric the Electric just eats crap, but he only does it once a week and burns it off because he rides 640 kilometers on his bike in a week. That's what's going on. Tell you the truth of what's happening here. This is what's going on. So good. Tastes exactly like fried chicken or even better. I'm not kidding. So this is why I can eat this all year round without getting tired of dieting. Of course it's so good. It's full of fat and it's high calorie dense food. The trick is to make it taste so good with less calories. That's where I come in. That's my genius. That's why I'm so successful with my cookbook. And yeah, I'm plugging my cookbook here because it freaking works and I wanna make money and I want you to be successful. If you eat this crispy chicken dinner, it might work. It might, if you have good discipline, willpower, and you're not very hungry. But if you're a hungry person and you need something to taste good and get you in a deficit and diets haven't worked all these years for you, 
It's time to try my cookbook. Like I said, I'm not the healthiest person. This is with chicken skin, but it depends on you. If you can't eat this, you don't want to eat this way, it is fine. Just cook with fresh chicken leg or chicken breast. And I don't like chicken breast, so this is the reason why I choose chicken leg. Exactly! You can't hate on him. He's telling it like it is. This is my diet, this is what I do. He's not making up BS. I eat this and I look this way. Good for freaking me. That's him. And if I plus minus a calculation, I basically still have a little bit more calories left, and that is 400 calories. He has 400 calories left to get to his total calorie intake of the day. He calls this a free meal. He can now eat protein, healthy stuff, or he can eat some little ice cream. Or basically, he says he reads his breakfast meal, or the hamburger patty meal, or he can have his ice cream. So he pretty much eats the same food every single day all the time. He doesn't have a lot of variety, okay? It works for him, but he's eating what he enjoys. I tell everybody, you get 10 foods, that's the mostly the, what you're gonna eat. There's 10 foods you're gonna eat on a weekly basis over and over again. If those 10 foods come from my freaking $100 cookbook, how much do you think it's worth it? It's the food you're gonna eat for the rest of your life. Think about it. Now, on my coaching plans, I have a snack option, an optional snack. I have the meal set up three, four, five times a day, whatever. I have an optional snack for all these people. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's zero to two. It depends on the diet, sometimes it's three. Listen, custom plans, they're all different. The calories in the snacks vary as well, depending on the individual. Sometimes they won't eat the snack. Sometimes they will, if they feel they're hungry and they need it. It could come from anything. It could be a freaking chocolate bar. Could be my protein bar, smarter choice, but doesn't need to be. Could be from ice cream, popcorn, fruit, Greek yogurt, a chicken thigh, whatever. It's free calories, in other words. It's part of your plan. That's why people can stick to my coaching diet plans. It allows for off meal plans too. You don't have to just never eat what's on my plan. I give you a lot of choices. Usually 80, and yeah, each choice has, and a lot of the choices have choices within the choices. So there's hundreds, literally, of options. Three of them, on average, have rice in it. Out of 80, think about it. Yeah, my cookbook's good. Not as good as being coached by Coach Greg, are you kidding me? Why do you think I charge $1,500 for a coaching plan? It's a lot more work and it's a lot better. Cookbook's amazing. More amazing is coached by Coach Greg. I have 35 clients right now that I coach. That's as much as I can handle. So I put the price where it is because I can't handle coaching too many people. I have to have a life. I can only work 100 hours a week. And even that's a stretch. So my plans automatically, you're gonna get enough protein. The macros don't matter. You get variety in your foods. You don't have to feel compelled to follow the diet plan all the time. You have an optional stack of whatever you wanna eat that you enjoy. Why do you think my diets work? I've thought about this all in advance. Done this for decades. It's not my first rodeo. I've competed for 25 years in bodybuilding competitions. Since I was in grade 12, I'm 44 years old. Oh no, I'm gonna hire some 22 year old kid. They're gonna coach me because they got first place in their local show. I'm a pro. I've done more amateur shows than you've done in your life. And in fact, more natural shows than most people have done shows in total. 42 drug tested natural shows. I competed natural, no PDs, 42 times. I've done 59 shows, 17 enhanced. I know more about natural training than enhanced. So y'all, oh, it's only because of each or it's only because of cycles you did. You want to believe in me? Trust me, watch more of my videos. Decide for yourself. See if I'm full of bullshit or not. Ask other YouTubers. Look at what people have said about me. Look it up. Read 100 messages. What percent are Greg's a shit box? What percent are Greg knows what he's talking about? So 95% of the people are going to benefit from my coaching. 5% won't. I can't please every freaking person. But I can please most people. That is, that's not what she said. She doesn't want me pleasing other people. Anyway. We're gonna end the video here. GregDuset.com for coaching. Greg Duset, IFB Pro. Hopefully you enjoyed the review. I give him two thumbs up. I ain't Siskel and Ebert, but I'm giving him two thumbs up. Quality information, honest. I just wouldn't follow exactly what he's saying on a diet. Bloop it up two videos. Watch one of these, educational. And until next time, I am out.